What does it mean to be autistic? Today on All About Canadian Books, Adam Madero will tell us. But before we speak with Adam, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, All About Canadian Books, because author interviews are posted bi-weekly. You get to hear the stories behind the books. They're Tuesday and Thursday, second and fourth week of every month. And it would be a shame to miss out. <laughs> Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's guest is author Adam Madero. Adam was diagnosed with Asperger's when he was nine. He holds a master's degree in history, a bachelor of education, and has dedicated his life to helping further the causes of autism and neurodiversity acceptance. Adam Maderno's memoir, Uncommon Sense, An Autistic Journey, is published by Latitude 46. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Adam. Thanks, it's good to be here. I'm glad to have you here. <laughs> if I happen to cough at all throughout, I have a bad asthma cough. It's not COVID, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> so. so, Adam, you have written this incredible memoir. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Well, the whole the idea behind writing it was... I mean, I just remember back in, I want to say 2011, 2012, when I was finishing my master's and stuff, I, I wanted to write something, but I really wasn't sure what, but I was also kind of starting to figure myself out as someone who was autistic and, you know, come to terms with that. Mm -hmm. And every time I'd look around at all the shelves at chapters and other bookstores, I'd see books by clinicians, books geared towards parents, but nothing reflecting the perspective of someone who'd actually lived with it and gone through things. So I thought to myself, that needs to be written about. That story needs to be told. Of course, then I stared at a blank Word document for the better part of five years until, <laughs> yeah. until my publisher and then one thing led to another. And so it became a memoir about my journey growing up, not only with aut autism, but also ADHD as well, which I discovered later in my life mm -hmm. and how these things have affected me. And also, you know, coming to terms with the fact that I am different and different is okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, Adam, I'd have to say, you know, reading your memoir, I, I really enjoyed it because you, you took me inside of your head and it was, I found it, I just so enlightening and I really appreciated everything that you had to say. I'm so glad you say it. I'm so glad to hear that. That's awesome. Oh, it, it really was. Now, can you, can you share with everyone, like, what does it mean to be autistic? I would say that that's different. It's okay. This is a complicated answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, on the one hand, it's different for everyone yeah. because it's a spectrum for a reason. And people think of autism as a, a linear spectrum from mild to severe, but that's not actually it at all. It's actually more of a crazy up and down bar graph of strength, weakness, strength. And it's like a spiky profile of yeah. ability and support need, you know, to the, to the point where no two autistic people are identical. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, a lot of us have a shared common experience and a lot of, I find, or I have found, or have read this through other people, uh, other people's blogs and whatever, that even, even if I'm, if I'm communicating with someone who's a non-speaking autistic person or mm -hmm. other has other support needs, I often feel I have more in common with them than I do with the neurotypical majority, even with our different support needs and different structure, because there is a lot of similarity there. So what does it mean to be autistic? I would say it means that you, your brain isn't broken. Keyword, that's important. It's not, it's not a deficit necessarily. I mean, it's, it could be a disability, but that's a social model versus medical model, a whole other rant. But <laughs> I would say it means that you speak a different language from the neurotypical majority of people. Mm -hmm. And you interpret social situations differently. And mm -hmm you interpret the world differently and it affects ev everything about who you are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's an all-encompassing thing but it's I guess a different operating system 
Yeah. Am I rambling too much? I could. I could... Not at no, okay. no, no, <laughs> okay. not, no. Okay, no. good. I no, I find I just I found it very interesting, and you know, and that's certainly a joy with a book, is because it does take you into a different headspace. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, I mean, one of the many things I loved was you shared your passion for Star Trek. <laughs> but also yeah. but also for for writing can yeah. you can you share it's a great story with our viewers how you stumbled into like writing being a passion oh yeah this is this is a great story thank you it is. um for all oh, excuse me <clears throat> like i said asthma <laughs> no it so as a kid growing up I mean, I I've, I was always really good at spelling. I typically was the kid who would get like nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 like, on like dictations in class all the time. Yeah. So like language was, language came to me fairly naturally, but I never really thought of it as, you know, like, oh, I want to be a writer. I was like, I liked doodling and drawing cartoon characters with my best friend and doing stuff like that. And then at one point during a hellish two years of middle school, I was doodling in class and, you know, struggling to kind of keep up with the lessons so my parents were like no you're not allowed to draw in class you have to pay attention <laughs> now the autistic brain is great for a lot of things but try getting it to do a thing it doesn't want to do <laughs> and it's amazing the kind of the, the kind of ways it'll find to not do the thing and in my case i i mean it's not that i I wasn't paying attention or that i didn't follow along to, to some degree but just i couldn't just do that alone so what I started to do because I needed to be creative, I needed an outlet was, well, they wouldn't suspect if I was not paying attention if I was writing instead of drawing because you can't prove that there's words on the page. It's not. <laughs> so I started writing and I started kind of like coming up with fiction based on schoolyard games my friends and I would play in like elementary school. And this led into writing about other things. And it's just, I discovered after a while that I, I actually like doing this and I'm actually pretty good at this. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So in a way, my parents gave me the best gift they ever could have while trying to be parents and doing the parenting thing and telling me they did it in class. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> and I mean, in your in your memoir, you share the bright spots. You also share some of your darkest moments. A very, very honest account of your life. Mm -hmm. um, can you also share... When you were writing your memoir, what did you learn about yourself? Well, so, okay, I'm glad you asked that because this is one of those things I've been going back and forth on. <laughs> writing a memoir is not as easy as people think it is. People think it's just, oh, you write down the facts of your life and what happened, whatever, but human memory is a really finicky thing. <laughs> <laughs> and there were times when I was writing this where I'd be writing something because it would sound good. And then I'd pause and I'd think, wait, did that actually happen that way? Or did I actually feel that? And then I think about it, like, well, yeah, I, I did. And, and then it would just lead to like these moments of, huh. Or, I, you know, so like reconstructing a memory or reconstructing a, a past event from memory and from talking to family and from just thinking about how you how I would have felt in that moment was really enlightening because it led me to reconsider my life in ways I hadn't before and like come to terms more with yeah. well how these things affected me because in the moment am I always thinking oh that's because of Asperger's or that's because of, it, no you're not thinking that in the moment but when you reflect on that afterwards as you're writing a memoir it's like yeah all of that really was because of that so <laughs> It's put my life in perspective, I guess I could say. Yeah, yeah. And what would you, for for all of the people who are picking up your book, what, when they when they put it down, they've finished, what would you hope that they walk away with? I hope they walk away with an understanding that the media representation of autism that we currently have is insanely one-dimensional and cliche and stereotypical and not at all reflective of the lived experience of autistic people. I also hope that they walk away realizing that like autistic people are human beings. We're not broken humans need to be fixed and made normal. We're people who yeah. need to be met where we are and kind of have our challenges assisted, but also our, our triumphs celebrated and like, you know, uplifted. Like I want people to realize that there are many different ways to be human outside of what we think of and that the medical model of there's something wrong with them, we have to get them therapy to fix them, isn't always like accepting and nurturing of change and difference, whereas we should be more. 
Absolutely. And you are so passionate about this. You are dedicating your life to educating and, and ad all your advocacy work. Um, you started off with the blog, Differently Wired. Yeah. Can you tell viewers about how about your advocacy work? So the blog started around, like, I went back to my story about writing the book. <laughs> um, writing the book was too overwhelming at that point. So I decided I'm going to start a blog and just get my, collect my thoughts on this and figure out where I stand on this. And, you know, yeah. so I started writing a few things. I started reading other people's, bo other people's books and that kind of thing. And I started just kind of try like differently why it was originally my way of making sense of what I thought of this whole thing as much as talking mm -hmm. about it to other people yeah. and then I found well the odd people are actually reading my blog and you know and I started to find over like I, I'd look at the google analytics on these things and be like huh there are people in the UK reading you know stuff like that and you're yeah. like I'm screaming into the void and apparently the void is looking back yeah and it's yeah. not a black cat it's actually the void <laughs> like, <laughs> so it was just it was an empowering moment because it was like, oh, I guess people are actually interested in the things I have to say. So I started to like write more and around 2015 or so, I got really, really, really like good about pumping out content like once every two weeks or something like that. And it, it's trickled to a standstill on the blog because I've got so many other avenues I'm working on now. But it was my first way of kind of not only dipping my feet into the advocacy world, but also figuring out where I stood and figure out my identity too, because a lot of the voice that I built there is what translated to Uncommon Sense. Like I wrote that with the same kind of voice, but at the same time, when I look back at my early blog posts, they reflect some dated understandings of things. They reflect mm -hmm. some earlier understandings of things. Some, you know, like it, it shows a journey, my own journey. If you go back to the beginning of the blog versus now, yes. you can see my, my own understanding has grown bajillion full but I couldn't have done it without that blog to start yeah and have you had a lot of feedback from your blog Adam not as much in recent years because I haven't updated it as much because mm -hmm. it's moved more towards Facebook I have a Facebook yes. page now that I do instead yes but on the Facebook page I have about 600 followers some now and, uh, and it's it's not huge I mean some people are thousands but it's it's a thing and I have gotten a lot of good feedback from uh, from parents and from other yes. other autistic people as well. Like I've connected with other members of the community and got, made friends and that kind of thing as well. And it's just been a great experience. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> and I, as I said, I really enjoyed your book. I'm glad. Common Sense. It's a great title. <laughs> Thank you. Originally, I wanted to call it Differently Wired. But someone already took the title differently wired. So, so we had to, but I'm, I really like the new title. It's awesome. I'm coming. It sense. is. It is. It's it's really great. And I will put links down below for viewers so they can purchase a copy. And I'll hold it up again. Straight. Oops. <laughs> Uncommon sense. Here, let's and, let's let's double that uh, attraction here. <laughs> oh yes, excellent. <laughs> so yeah, links down below, and also I'll put links to your YouTube channel, your Facebook page, and your blog as well. So Sounds good. so people can find you. <laughs> so thank Sounds you, good. Adam, for coming on and talking about your memoir. Anytime, I'm grateful to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity. Oh my, it's my pleasure. And for our viewers out there, a big thank you for watching.